Hey, welcome back to the uh, Level Up podcast. And I've got my business partner and Level Up podcast co-host, Greg Harrelson. You are back with us today. So welcome back, Greg. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Excited yeah, we- to be here. And more, more, more so excited to have this conversation. I know that's getting ready to go down. Yeah, so we've got a great guest um, coming to us from the opposite coast of the country where we're at, Mr. Steve Sims. Steve, welcome to the uh, Level Up podcast, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, for those that may not know who you are in the in the listening crowd, can you just bring us up to speed on kind of what you do? And I know today's subject is one where, please get your pad and paper out because <laughs> Steve's going to be talking about you know, bringing clarity to your digital presence online, which is going to be exciting. So Steve, take it away. Wow. Who am I? What have I done? So I started off as a bricklayer from East London, um, poor and aggravated about it. Um, I ended up launching the world's first luxury concierge firm uh, that I targeted only to billionaires because I didn't want to target the poor people because I knew what they were like. So (laughs) I went straight for the uber rich. And along that, I was able to interview, very similar to to podcast today, interview some of the most powerful people in the planet. I ended up doing things like sending people down to the Titanic, putting a civilian on the International Space Station, getting a drum lesson with Guns N' Roses, a white carpet piano lesson with uh, Elton John. I've ended up working in the media and the branding uh, and the uh, communication within Kentucky Derby, New York Fashion Week, Sir Elton John's Oscar party, the Grammys. Basically, I end up trying to find a way of uncluttering your message and your solution. So for 20 plus years, I I owned the the most successful concierge firm. And now I own Sims.media that actually helps companies and um, individuals amplify the solution they provide and remove the the clutter by focusing on the clarity of that digital presence. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Removing the clutter. And increasing the clarity. It, it, I mean, it sounds like I, I, my wife just did this with the closets in our house. Yeah, I think we root a lot of clutter and, and I was able to see a lot clearer. Uh, but obviously, we're going to talk about uh, the, the real estate industry, social media. And um, I want to just start off, you know, with audience, make sure we understand here that Steve is not necessarily a specialist in the real estate industry. He's a specialist in the area of communication which is everything. Communication is everything that we have to deal with in real estate. But, you know, Steve, we communicate so much in our industry in the social media world, whether it be Instagram or Twitter or, you know, or or, or Facebook. And then obviously, you know, I'm not doing it, but uh, a lot of people are doing it in the TikTok and all these different things that they're doing. And it seems like, you know, that, um, that it, it, the, the mission is just get as much out as you can. But I don't really hear anybody in our industry talking to the agents about how to be effective at the communication in social media. So maybe you could just take us on your journey and, and, how, and, and get us on the right track in the context of that. All right, so let's play a game for a start. Okay, Uh, this is for anybody listening to this podcast. I want you on a desktop or a laptop, not on a tablet, not on a phone, but on anything that you can open up multiple screens that you can look at at the same time. I want you to open up every single one of your social profiles, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, your your Instagram, all of them, anything you've got, your TikTok. And I want you to look at every single one of those social profiles, and then quite openly look in the mirror. Can people see you? Are you identically the same person on all social platforms? Because here's the thing that I find irritating as well as laughable. Most people create their own confusion. In LinkedIn, that sat there in a shirt and tie, or they're all very smart, and they're leaning up against a book cupboard that's not theirs, it's just in a public library, and they take that photograph of them looking all regal and pompous, and then you go over to Facebook, and it's like short shorts and a Mai Tai, and it's girls gone wild. There's no correlation. People don't understand that before they actually buy the product, they buy you. Now, I paused there because you need to understand that. The second you stop communicating, you become a transaction. The second you become a transaction, 
purple bricks are going to come back into town and put you out of business. The reason you're in business is because you know what the person doesn't know. And in order for you to be able to expose that, you have to be able to communicate. But while the person is jumping around the fence trying to work out the best person to solve their home buying problems, they're looking at who you really are. They will look at the website and they will see everyone looking the exact same in the non-offensive red tie or blue tie. And then they will flip over to the social, which is where most people search who they're going to deal with. And if you've still got a picture up there from a photo shoot you did in 1982 when you were trying to decide between becoming a real estate agent or moving into soft porn, and you're still using that bloody picture, then you're doing yourself a disservice because you're going to turn up to the client, remember the picture that they saw and go, hang on a minute, who the bloody hell am I seeing? You never want to start off by confusing your client. So the first thing you've got to do is make sure that every one of your pictures is current. Try to actually make it the same picture. There's a picture of me with a glass of whiskey on every single one of my social platforms, okay? I am impossible to misunderstand. You see me in the street, you'll go, that's the guy I've seen on his Facebook page, on his Instagram, on his website. I'm not allowing confusion to start the conversation. Neither should you. Apple, and this will surprise you, is exactly the same person on LinkedIn that it is on Twitter. And it is on TikTok. So it's exactly the same. So that's the first thing you should do. Open up all the social profiles. Make sure the bio is exactly the same. Make sure the pictures are coming. That's the first thing you do in gaining clarity on who you are and what you stand for. Now, you also said, and, and Greg, you said that, you know, people are on TikTok, people are on TikTok, and it's just kind of like the tips we get are, Record a video, upload it on the hour, every hour, saturate the market, throw as much... Co no, that's not how you do it, okay? That's amateur 101, all right? The first thing you've got to focus on is, why am I putting it up there and who am I talking to? Stop worrying about what you look like. No one wants to date you. They want you to solve their problem. So start focusing on having a conversation with the person the needs of property. Hey, are you looking for something in Vegas? Are you looking for something in North Carolina? Are you looking for something in Florida? Then maybe this is good because it's got these attributes. It's got this. And look at the surrounding. Talk to the person. Have a conversation on video. And if you are going to post it, post that exact. And this is where everyone goes wrong. Post the same content on every single platform. Now, here's a little test for you to play again. If you said tonight in your office, hey, watch the news tonight, and then at 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to talk about it. At 9 o'clock the following morning, you would all be able to talk about the top five headlines of what happened during that day, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. But if you said to everyone, okay, what station did you get that information from? Now, people are like, well, NBC, CNBC, KTLA, LA Today, you know. It would be different news stations carrying the same news. You've got to understand the social platforms are a platform. It's the exact same thing. You will consume where you want to consume from. So why are you putting a different message on Twitter that you are on Facebook, that you are on TikTok, that you are on LinkedIn? Whatever you're posting, Post it on every single platform and allow the consumer to consume where they consume. Okay. Also, make sure that you put it up regular. For, I'm not trying to diss Gary V, but don't worry about that. Well, it's got to be every hour and you've got to put up 30 videos a day. You've got to saturate the market. Who's got the chance to live and, and breathe and eat a sandwich when you're doing that? OK, yes, there are companies that will do it, but when you put up too much information, a lot of the good information gets overlooked and you, are get, you are start attracting people that are not in the market. OK, they're just following you. Gary Vee openly said that 98 percent of his uh, followers not only can't or won't do business with him, but probably can't even afford to. So you've got to understand what's moving the needle, what's the purpose? 
is this a vanity metrics? Am I trying to put a video out there on a short skirt because I want a million followers? Or do I want one client? That's the thing where people are going wrong. They're looking at it and go, well, if it's not viral, I launched a concierge firm for billionaires. In my peak, I had 93 clients. 93. Do you know how many social followers I had at the time? 16. 16. Who gives a crap? If you've got billionaire clients, do you care? So here's the other thing. If you're not going to post and post regular, and we'll come into regularity in a minute, don't be there. Okay? The worst thing, there's something worse than having um, uh, social, and that's having bad social. It is actually better for you not to be on a social platform than to have bad social presence. So if you're not going to pay attention to it, then turn it off. And again, I'm trying to give you tidbits here. So here's one of the things you've got to do. For the first thing, your name has to be the exact same on every social platform. Okay? Step one. Even if you're not on that social platform, grab your name. Grab your real estate. Grab your digital real estate. I am Steve D. Sims. Anywhere you consume your media. SteveDSims.com, Steve D. Sims Instagram, Steve D. Sims LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm Steve D. Sims everywhere. I wanted to be Steve Sims, but there's an artist, a footballer, so I threw my middle initial in there. You may have to do the same thing, but I don't want to be Steve D. Sims over here and Steve Sims123 and S. Sims Los Angeles Rocks over here. Again, you're confusing it and you're making it hard for people to find you. So find a name that you, and if you're selling property in New York and your name's Joanne, then what about Joanne New York or Joanne Sells New York or whatever? But then use that name everywhere. So you've got a little bit of homework to do there first. If you've got an account already, you can apply to change your name if it's available so you won't lose your following. People think I can't change my name because I'll lose all my following. No, you won't, okay? You apply to Facebook, you apply to LinkedIn, you apply to YouTube, you can actually do that as long as the name's available. So that's the first thing. If any social platform pops up, I don't care if you like it, that's not relevant. Register, register your name, put that account on private, okay? I've got accounts in Parler, MeWe, WeChat. You know, I've got, I don't know how many social profiles I have, but when TikTok was going down because of the potential China hacking threat, do you remember a company called Trilla? Yeah. Trilla was like the rival for TikTok, mm -hmm. but I had an account on Trilla. Do I go on Trilla now? I don't, but I go on TikTok every now and then. So the bottom line of it is, I'm not saying you've got to do anything with it, but I am saying you do have to grab your name. You have to put your profile in there. You have to put the picture in there. Click it on private until you're ready to put something in there. And then the video that you do, videos are always better. The video that you do regarding this new legislation, this new property, moving into the area, whatever the video you do, and this is where it comes down to regularity, the exact same content gets posted on every single platform, same time. Now, you two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. Do either of you have a dog? Yes. You have a dog. All right. So, um, Greg, do you have a dog? I do not. Right. Okay. So, you know, it gets to five o'clock in the evening. The dog starts pestering you for his dinner. He knows it's five o'clock. Never, ever have I ever seen a dog with a watch. <laughs> but he knows it's five o'clock. We're just the same. You know, we know when to put the six o'clock news on without checking our watch. We just feel that oh, I must be getting around six. I want to watch the news. You know? We have those triggers. We have those habits. So if you're posting on a Monday at 10 o'clock and you post every Monday at 10 o'clock, keep posting that at 10 o'clock. Get your client in that trigger. That, oh, it's 10, oh, it's Sims time over there. <coughs> so regularity is not 20 times a day. It could be once a week. I'll post on my Instagram page. I think I post, I think it's three times a week. 
surprise, surprise, it's the exact same content that's on every other platform. But if I'm at an event, hey, I'm I'm maybe posting twice a day because I'm like backstage before I go on, you know, Todd Duncan or Stephen Marshall, Bill Hart or one of their programs. And then, you know, I'm out at, that night with a bunch of people and I'll take a picture there and I'll do a bunch of those things because I'm at an event and I'll saturate it and then I'll go back to my three. So it's okay doing some specials. My point is the rules are guidelines, but a lot of people are distorting and distracting by making up their own rules. And there are certain rules that should never be broken. And the one rule that should never, ever, ever be messed with is clarity. Don't confuse your audience. People are going to look at your website. They're going to make a decision from that. Do they want to communicate with you? Don't put yourself on a bad foot straight off. So I love all that. One of the things that I see as, as a challenge with agents is because we don't want to take a stand for really who we are and what we do stand for, then that does that lead us into trying to be everything for everybody? Because what you're saying there is find that group of people that you resonate with. It doesn't have to be the 98%. It can be the 2%. But when you resonate with that group of people, then go all in, you're consistent across the board. So does it require us to really be clear on what is our value proposition? What do we stand for? And do we have to make that decision versus going, man, I've got to try to be some, I've got to be attractive to the people on LinkedIn in one way, then I've got to go to Facebook and act a little bit different. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you should never act. It. For a start, it takes zero effort to be me, Okay. You should have the exact same. Stop trying to be someone you're not. If you don't have a Porsche and you don't have a Mercedes, then don't lean up against someone else's car and take a picture. You know, it's as simple as that. Be transparent with who you are. If, you, if you've got a couple of dogs, walk your dogs. Show a video of you walking your dogs. I'm not saying go onto all social platforms and start belting out your political views. I'm saying if you like walking dogs, Walk dogs. If you like hiking at the weekends, hike the weekends. If you love the restaurants in your area, then shoot little pictures and videos of, hey, when you're in this area, check out Tito's Italian. Best Italian on the strip. Expose to people who you are and what you like so they can understand if they resonate towards you. Okay? I have people that just love my rawness. You know, I'm always in a black T-shirt. I'm always riding motorcycles. There's no pretense. There's also no competition. Now, here's a dumb thing. You get two people turn up at an event, and they both got sports cars. And it's a case of, well, who's got the more expensive sports car? You know, who's better? Who bought it? Who leased it? You know, who's borrowing it from their next-door neighbor? There's all this kind of competitive edge, isn't there? But if you just don't care and you get off the bus and you turn up and go, hey, I love a sports car, all of a sudden you're no longer a threat, okay? People today, especially real estate agents, you are the worst offenders for this. You focus on yourself too much. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. This is not a Tinder profile. I care that you're smart enough in your area to find a property that's going to make me happy and create that house to become a home. When you focus, and I'll give an example. Two o'clock in the morning, you or someone in your family has a blinding headache. You wake up in the morning, you go to the kitchen cabinet, you open up the cabinet, and you pull out a headache tablet. Now, let me ask you this. Do you give a rat's backside what the branding looks like on that headache tablet box? Do you care? Do you look at it and go, well, I don't like that logo. Let me see if there's another one in there. You don't, do you? You buy headache tablets to solve a, a solve a problem. I'm moving, and let's be blunt. No one likes moving. No one likes applying for a mortgage. No one likes having a... I just want to... Can I wake up one day and find my beautiful home? In order, I want to find my who that's going to actually do that. Don't care what you look like. Don't care what you drive. Don't care how hot you look. I care about you're going to find me my home. Stop looking in. Start looking out. 
and converse with the people that have the need that you are the solution to? You know, um, uh, a couple things. Number one, I, I feel like relieved. Like it's much harder to be multiple personalities than it is to just be one. So like, you're kind of like letting us off the hook here. Cause you know, if, yeah. if, if for, for those of us or in the industry that are like really thinking, okay, well, I can't put the same content on Instagram that I just put on Facebook because then the people that are following me on both channels, they're gonna just see that it's the same content. Like, I think that's what's in our heads as an industry and maybe even beyond uh, our industry. Uh, so it's a relief uh, to know that we don't actually have to think that hard and create five pieces of content today in order to to be different on every one. The other thing is, is I, I think I'm what I'm taking from your message and I want you to make sure that um, I, I'm, I'm interpreting it correctly. And that is um, if we just be ourselves, then we're being authentic and authenticity is attractive. So you could wear your shirt, your, your, your black shirt and drive your motorcycle. And maybe I don't drive motorcycles, but because you're actually just being authentic, I could still be attracted to you and want to do business with you. Am I, am, am, is my interpretation there? How, how do you feel about that? I want to just, that's what I'm kind of taking from a lot of this dialogue. So a lot of people have and it seems to be the uh, uh the mouse pad statement for for 2020 and 2021 and who knows however long authenticity okay mm -hmm. authenticity if we break it down is clarity transparency and making things easy to understand you look at someone and go oh look at that it's, it's so authentic you know what that actually means psychologically is you can very easily make a decision on whether or not you like that person or not. Very, very easy to understand. You know, even if you hate them, mm. being clear allows you to make a decision very, very easy. And today, it's paramount. You know, bearing in mind, our ability to communicate is getting worse. You know, and we're all blaming it on the fact, oh, COVID's come along and I'm losing my relationships. You started losing your relationships when you were outsourcing your birthday announcements to MySpace and Friendster back in the late, the late 90s, okay? Social platforms are pretty much anything other than social platforms. They're advertising platforms, okay? People get upset because in the good old days, you'd have a baby, you'd phone your mates up, they'd all come around, you'd drink and smoke cigars and celebrate the little sprog, Okay. Now what you do is you post a picture up online and get really aggravated if it hasn't gone viral by the end of the day because it's your baby, okay? We don't communicate very well. We're also in a gotcha society where we're scared of kind of like, oh, what did I wear to a fancy dress party in, in you know, 1995 that's now going to come up and make me look, you know, uh, inappropriate. So what do we do? We avoid having the conversations. Today, there's a lot of noise, anger, distortion. There's a lot of uh, hashtag campaigns out there creating difficult conversations that we have to have. The one thing today everybody wants is not a new Mercedes, is actually clarity. I want to know that the person I'm talking to understands me and I understand them. You know, don't borrow your mate's watch because you think it's going to make you look more affluent. You're borrowing someone's watch. If you don't have a 20 grand, 30 grand, 10 grand, one grand watch, don't wear a watch. Your phone tells the time you don't need a watch. The bottom line of it is today, we're very angry and we have a short span of attention. We're constantly getting blistered with bad news, COVID, politics, everything else. I want to find an easy decision. And if I can relate to you, Quickly, you've just made that decision really easy, and I want to stay with you. That's great, man. That's that, that's good stuff. Good stuff. So, Brenda, what, what's on your mind? This is there's so much. Uh, you know, I, we're, a lot of times we just we have this conversation and we almost like an interview. And 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 
it, the content that you're delivering, it just doesn't warrant that. And uh, we really appreciate that. We, we, we really do. And, and I think we're all, myself in, 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 in the audience has to be like really taking note here of how much effort we have putting, been putting into trying to be different all the time that yep. it's much more simple. It's just be ourselves. 100% is really, you, you're taking effort to be someone who you're not. Uh, that and takes a lot saying, of effort. <laughs> it takes hard. a lot of effort. Yeah. And, yeah. and you shouldn't have it. And you said earlier about, you know, people are worried about showing up. I don't care who you are, what you are. I just want to know that you're real. Um, if you try to be someone you're not, whether it by driving a car that, you know, maybe you can't afford, but it looks good, you know, wearing the jewelry or you're wearing fake, you know, Gucci t-shirts or something like that. So you look as though you appeal to a different bottom line of it is you become a fake. No one wants to deal with a fake. Do not be exposed as a fake black t-shirt and jeans has never harmed me dealing with billionaires because I've never focused on what I'm looking like. No one wants to date this, but I'm here to solve your problem. And that's why I get to business. Hey, on that point, Steve, because I wrote down a couple of things that we went a different direction, which I love in this call, but I want to see if <laughs> Sorry. You, it, no, no, I love it. But I want to kind of, I think that's a good way to, to, to circle back. There's people on the call that are already, they, they've gone from agent to entrepreneur, they've done big things. And then there's a group of people that haven't yet, and they want to. In your story, in just that little bit that you said, you were a bricklayer, poor, and did what you did. Maybe answer these two questions. First is, tell me, tell me what you think about when I describe that as your past has nothing to do with dictating your future. And then the second thing I wrote down is, what gave you the right to believe that you could dream as big as you did when you said, nah, -uh, I'm not going to go be a concierge. I'm not going to go work with millionaires. I'm going to work with billionaires. I think that would be helpful. Good two questions. Um, so to, to, to go through the, uh, the first one, um, which was uh, what, what kind of pushed me. I remember later on in life, a friend of mine, Joe Polish, once said to me that the definition of hell is to meet the man or woman that you could have been. Mm. And when I was younger, I was thinking to myself, why does it have to be this way? And, and kids, you know, if any of us have got kids, you know, they, they, it's two minutes before dinner time and they want a lollipop. And you go, you can't have a lollipop, we're having dinner. But I want a lollipop. You can't have a lollipop, dinner's coming out soon. You end up just telling them to shut up, okay? Mm -hmm. But the bottom line of it is, kids just want things. There may be no in-depth thought behind it, but they just want things. As a teenager, growing up, looking at my surroundings, and I remember my granddad, my granddad worked on the same building site as me, and I was 16 years old. He was like 80. And I remember saying to him, very inappropriate. And he was a big lump of a lad. He could have smacked me into Tuesday very easily. I remember saying to him one day, did you ever think you'd be doing this when you were this old? And that was, that's a very rude thing to say to an eight year old man that's breaking his back on a rainy, you know, British building site. He didn't even look at me to answer. He literally just said, if you don't quit today, you'll be me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I have got to find a better tomorrow. And I had that demand. I had that demand in me uh, to not be where I was. You see, I'm not frightened of trying. I'm not frightened of failing. I'm not frightened of making a mistake. I'm frightened of standing in the same pool of water today that I will be in six months' time. You see, I want to try things. And when we try things, this can be as, as, as ridiculous as trying a different radio station trying a different starter on a menu that you've never had before. When you're going home, instead of turning right, turn left and go that route. Get your mind used to trying different things and then you will start seeing different things. I don't know if you've ever heard of the yellow car psychology. You've never seen a yellow car on the highway. Never. Until your mate turns up with a yellow car and then the following day, what's the only thing you see on the road? Yeah, Everyone's cars. got a yellow car, all right? That's the same with opportunity. You don't see opportunity until you do. And so for me, as a young lad growing up, 
I demanded better of myself. I tried to find out. And that's what got me into the concierge firm because quite simply, I didn't want to walk the red carpet with Elton John. I didn't care about that. I cared about having a conversation with someone that was rich enough to be able to afford to do that. I was getting up at four mm. o'clock in the morning. I knew what it was like to work hard, but how come they were rich and I wasn't? So I went out to try and find those conversations. Let's be blunt. We have those conversations today on podcasts. Had the podcast world existed back then, I don't know if I would have designed a, a, a concierge firm. The concierge firm was nothing more than a Trojan horse to get me into your room to have a conversation with you, a billionaire, on how come you have way more money than me? How come you're successful mm. and I'm not? That was what I was doing. I had a demand for more. So anyone out there that's very happy selling $100,000 houses, good for you. How about demanding you only sell million-dollar houses? You know, start demanding more of you. And you said to me, what gave me the right to actually demand more? Well, I think it was two parts stupidity and one part ignorance, okay? Because as entrepreneurs, and we're all entrepreneurs, you know, there's no such thing as job security. You stop selling, see how secure your job is. Yeah. You know, I went out there and I demanded more of myself and to do so, you've got to be a little bit ignorant to the possibility you're going to get a slap. You know, you've got to try those things. I've had really, really bad, immature conversations with incredibly successful people that has gone bad. You know, they've got bored of me. They've got tired of my stupid questions. They've not wanted to talk to me and they've walked away. Now, because of those bad conversations, I've trained myself through those mistakes to have good conversations. So you've got to realize that every time something goes wrong, a marketing campaign, a flyer, a bio on your social, the picture you use for your social, a statement you make, when you don't get the response that you want, don't start looking at the crowd or start holding your head and going, oh my God, I can't connect with my community. Oh my God, I'm not getting any business. Look at what you're putting out there. Learn from that. Tweak that. That's your education. I've never got anything wrong in my life. I've just learned how it shouldn't have been done. And that's educated me. So what gave me the right? I demanded more of me. And then every time I would do something, it would go wrong. I'd be like, well, there you go. There's my MBA and how not to do that. Go try it. We very rarely trip on the same curb twice. Maybe there's another curb down the road, but we get educated. So no one likes being poor. No one likes insecurity. No one likes being able to you know, dance to somebody else's drum. I want things for me. I demand more of me. So I try more. And even today when I'm, I'm quite happy. I live nicely. I ride loads of motorcycles. I'm very happy, but I'm not staying still. If in six months' time, I've not tried something different and probably failed at it 30 times, I'm going to be very disappointed in myself. Outstanding. Yeah, that's some great stuff. That's great stuff. Well, yeah, Steve, I, I, we really appreciate you bringing this, uh, this conversation to, um, let me say, we really appreciate you bringing this clarity uh, into our industry. We really do. And, um, I have a feeling that, um, that our audience is going to want to hear more from you. Uh, what's the best way to, uh, to your website, your, you know, how do people get in touch with you or learn more about you? Well, I'm at Steve D Sims, one, two, three, four, and Steve S Sims does L exactly. <laughs> I'm at Steve D Sims everywhere, everywhere. So if you're on Instagram, Guess what my handle is? Steve D. Sims. There's only one M in Sims and D for dashing. If you want my website, guess what? SteveDSims.com. If you want me on YouTube, Steve D. Sims, you get the picture. All right. Yes. So yeah. continuity, when you're having these kind of events, be able to give someone a tagline that is synonymous with everywhere you are. So wherever you consume your media, but I also have a free Facebook group where I do a lot of lives um, called uh, An Entrepreneur's Advantage with Steve Sims. So if you want to join up for that, then you'll see me doing my rants on there. 
Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I definitely, uh, when anybody needs a, uh, a speaker at any event, I'm definitely going to be recommending you. Uh, you've got great content, got great energy, and you speak in, in very uh, clear terms where we can understand. So, Good. Uh, Brendan, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Steve, again, for uh, on behalf of Greg and I and the entire audience for, for hopping on here. And uh, hopefully we'll have future conversations. I hope I'll pass across. All the best, guys. Absolutely. All the best. And for the rest of the audience, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to the podcast. And uh, we love the reviews, good or bad, indifferent. Um, it helps us to continue to know, you know what you guys are looking for and gets great guests like Steve on. And um, so with that, we will see you guys on the next episode.